well, I mean, on the one hand, it's just higher energy. Fermilab has a center of mass energy, total center of mass energy of 2 TeV. And, uh, and the Large Hadron Collider is 14 TeV when it's finally, after a while, it'll be 14 TeV. So you're just going to a higher energy, which means you can really probe smaller distances, which means you can make higher mass particles because you've got more energy. And so just from an experimentalist point of view, it's just way cooler, and we probably will see something interesting. From a theorist point of view, it, it reaches the energy where they say this symmetry-breaking uh, cause must show itself. It has to show itself. Actually, there's an argument that probability is violated, that probability will be greater than one <laughs> unless we see something happening. So, that's, so those are those two different views. So in fact, the, the, the Large Hadron Collider is going to start at a, a lower energy than 14 TeV. It's going to start at 7 because there's some technical problems. And a lot of the experimentalists are still incredibly happy because for us, it's n something new. You're looking somewhere you've never looked before, and it's, it's fascinating to see what you see. The theorists are a little more grumpy. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the New York Times and stuff, they're very grumpy and they're saying, this is unacceptable. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can't believe it's not going to turn on yet. I'm getting old, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, so those are the two different views. But it, everybody's excited that it, that it will turn on. It's ex extremely difficult. These, these machines are extremely complicated. It's extremely difficult to get them up and running. It usually takes a couple of years. I'm just interested to see what happens. <laughs> the, there's the string theorists. You probably know about them because they're often in the news. And apparently they're very, very smart. <laughs> and they say there's a, a new symmetry, which is very exciting, a new space-time symmetry called supersymmetry. That So for all the particles we have, there are super particle partners. Okay. Now the symmetry would say that the super particle partners would have exactly the same mass as the particles. But that's, that's not true. We already know that. So there's, an, there's a symmetry breaking there. But the string theorists believe that supersymmetry must exist, even if incredibly badly broken. And so they are absolutely hoping that we will find supersymmetry. And we are absolutely looking for them. Uh, and so the, there's a lot of now experimentalists who do what the theorists say, unfortunately. <laughs> and they they are looking for supersymmetry, and there's other people who are looking or more renegade, and uh, and I don't know what they will find, or I will find. <laughs> well, you know it's a great idea. People wrote papers, uh, you know, ten years ago. Could you create a really tiny black hole at a collider? And then the problem we were always thinking of was, well, how, how, this is funny because we were always thinking, well, how would you know that you had created a black hole? Because it would decay immediately into, not only would decay, it would decay into like hundreds of particles, all very low energy. And, you know, how, how could you tell? So we were always thinking of, not of the problem of creating a black hole, but how would we possibly see it before it, before it's completely gone? And we convinced ourselves at Fermilab, for instance, that we couldn't. We wouldn't even know if we made black holes. So it was, a, it was a big surprise to me that all of a sudden people were really worried that we were going to make one so big that not only would we see it, but that it would devour the, the whole Earth. So, that, I mean, CERN has put out a report that says, you know, the likelihood is incredibly small. It's still, you can't say it's zero. But I think, you know, it would be fast. <laughs> it be, might be an interesting way to go. You wouldn't have a lot of time to worry, like in those, all those apocalyptic films, you know, where... It takes a long time. <laughs> so uh, so I, w I just tell the people that I just incredibly, you know, the, the probability is incredibly small. On the other hand, it wouldn't be so bad. Well, Fermilab is still running. And in fact, Fermilab is going to continue running until we actually see, see that the LHC is working. Um, it'll probably run for another year. It's possible you could see the Higgs boson. If you're very lucky, it's possible. You, and it's there. <laughs> it's possible that you could see it at Fermilab. But, but it's very unlikely. Um, I don't know. You know, there's so few people working on the collider at Fermilab now that it might be hard to find anything. 
um, yeah, I guess it is sad. I worked on that for 25 years. I have a, I have a problem separating. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Actually, more than 25 years. It's sad. <laughs>